Hi friends. Welcome to floss tube number 14. Um, welcome to my channel, Sycamore Stitches. My name is Amanda. My pronouns are she, her. And it's been about two weeks since my last floss tube. Uh, welcome back if you're a returning viewer and if this is your first time. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you'll stick around and see some of my stitching. This is a cross stitch channel and yeah, just basically cross stitch. Uh, any other crafty things I have been doing, but that's basically right now. Um, oh, actually, well, I do have my, one of my pieces is like a counted canvas work piece that I'm going to show you today. So that's not exactly cross stitch needle work of some sort. Um, I realized that this past weekend is my six months anniversary since doing my first floss tube. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Um, I've really enjoyed doing these videos because I feel like it kind of keeps me like on track for some of the projects that I want to do. Um, and just, I like to feel organized. I like to be able to see my progress kind of and I don't know I just feel like doing this kind of helps me to see that um, hopefully some other people are enjoying them as well um, <laughs> but I'm enjoying doing them so I guess that's really all that matters um, I usually do these videos when my kids are at school and I was actually being quite productive today, so I did not do that, and they are now home, so um, we may have some interruptions, hopefully not too many. You probably won't notice. I'll have to just cut, it'll just be more editing for me, so no worries for you. I've been catching up a lot on watching some floss tubes and listening to my podcast. See, as soon as I said that. One of my kids came in to talk to me. I should have probably made an announcement to them to like kind of stay out of here, but oh well. Um, anyhow, yes, I've been catching up on watching floss tubes and listening to all my podcasts, so been able to get some stitching done while doing that stuff. Um, and I don't know, I, for a while I was feeling like I could barely keep up on floss tube with the people that I was following, and I don't know if some of them haven't put out videos in a while or what, but like I even have a little bit of extra time to go look for some new people. So that's been um, kind of interesting to just uh, also be checking out some new things. Um, what else? What else? I do, to, let's get into the stitching. Let's do that. Um, I do have a fully finished object. I just framed this this morning. Another reason I put off taping today because I was like, I would like to have something finished to show you. So I had to do this first. Anyhow, this is my um, Between Two Pines that I finished a couple weeks ago, um, which is from Emma Congdon's Cross Stitch for the Earth book. And um, yeah, I just put it in a basic $5 frame from Target. I think I like it. I literally just finished this, so I'm still trying to decide. I think I do though. It's kind of, I might need to make some adjustments. I thought it was a tiny bit crooked in this corner, but then it's kind of like, it's actually the pattern is like higher on one side than the other. Anyhow, so I don't think it's my placement necessarily, but I might, I might need to adjust it a little bit. Anyhow, it is done. I've been noticing I've been doing more and more of my framing without the glass, um, partially just because it just depends on what frames you get. I don't do custom framing. I just like regular, you know, regular frames. And um, there's just not enough room. Um, and especially with a piece like this that is on a dark fabric, I'm, it's actually nicer without the glass. It doesn't have glare. It kind of looks a little three-dimensional. Um, I also started, I didn't do it yet on this one, but I have, a, I guess, a bad habit of not putting my initials or dates on my pieces. I just don't really like to do that. I don't really like how it looks. There are some pieces I feel like I could 
put initials in a year on and it would look okay, but there are some that I find it almost like distracting. I, I don't know. I don't know what my issue is with it. So I did go out and um, let me show you this other one just as an example. Just get like stickers, label stickers, and put my name and like year on those and stick those on the back of frames, especially ones that I'm giving to other people. I don't know if that's the best system, but it's better than nothing. I haven't been doing anything and at least I'm putting the little label stickers on. Um, let me know what you do. Uh, I know a lot of people do stitch right on the piece with their initials and, and like date. Um, let me know what you find useful to do and especially if you have found a system like labels or something that doesn't involve stitching on the piece. Send those ideas my way because I feel like I need to do something and I'm not really sure what. Um, maybe you guys have some good ideas. Uh, my other piece, I was I just washed it, ironed it today, but I did not frame it because I was gonna ask you guys for your opinion on like what color frame, but then I guess I just decided on Amazon right before this. <laughs> I still kind of want to know your opinion though. Um, I couldn't decide between a light blue frame or like a cream frame, like this color. I decided to go with the cream because there's so much blue already in the piece. And I want it to look similar to my summer version where there's only a little bit of gray, but I took the gray out and made that the frame so that I thought going with the um, cream might do that. Plus I'm buying these frames just on Amazon and they come in a two pack and it will probably be easier for me to find a use for my second 10 by 10 frame if it's cream rather than light blue although I could probably still find something to do with a light blue frame too anyhow if you do have opinions on what would look better I still I'm kind of interested I, I think I'm gonna stick with the one I just ordered though but what do you think I, it's gonna be a square 10 by 10 frame I like I kind of like the idea just like that other one of putting a circle inside a square frame. I just kind of like how it looks rather than uh, finishing in a hoop. And this one wouldn't finish well in a hoop because it has these little clouds sticking off the edge. So what do you think? What color frame should I put that in? And I know I only usually frame things uh, when I finish them. I have lots of animals and kids. I have three kids. I have two dogs. I have two cats. The idea of making things like little pillows out of my pieces sounds awful. It sounds like things that my pets might purposely or accidentally destroy. At the very least, it's going to have dog and cat hair on it. And, I, and I'm not even talking about pillows that like you put on a couch just because there's dog and cat hair in my house. Um, I don't know. Things just, uh, it's just, I guess, not my style to have those kinds of doodads in my house. Um, so, Anyhow, I just realized, <laughs> so first off, I usually tape from the other, from my table over here because of the way the light comes in, but I didn't want to clear everything off my desk today and it's kind of messy. So I thought I'm just going to tape this way. And I just realized that you can see my crocheted breast, not my personal one, but I have a couple crocheted breasts back there. Anyhow, pay no mind to those. I'm a doula and a lactation counselor, and I use those <laughs> when I teach breastfeeding. So, um, I hope that's not distracting. I'll put my shoulder in front of it. Um, <laughs> seems normal for me personally to have in my office, but then I'm like, maybe people on Floss Tube might think that's odd. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> okay, how about some whips some works in progress that I've been working on since last week. Let's see. First, let me show you this one. This is, um, I have a couple projects I'm doing right now from this book, which is Emma Congdon's Cross Stitch for the Earth, which is what I said the, the one I just put in the frame is from as well. This one is called Be Kind to All That Live or I just call it Be Kind. They don't actually have names in the book, so you just kind of name them what you want, I guess. Um, and I have done 
so much on this piece this week. Well, actually, I mean, I guess these last two weeks. It's very, once I get started on it, maybe because there's like so many little things to finish, like I really want to keep going. So, um, let me take just this top bar off of my Q-snap so, so you can see all the stuff that is stitched. So, yeah, there we are. It is really coming along. I think I put like 20 hours into this in just the last two weeks. Um, since last time, I've done all of this along the bottom, probably from like this fern down, the fox, the deer, most of this up here. I think the word be and like half of the word live or maybe even more than half. I've done a lot <laughs> since then. I just kind of had this middle section done and like the butterfly. Um, it's coming along really well. All I have to do now is there's a little snail here, a couple little leaves, and then a tree that comes all the way up and has branches and has an owl in it. And so really just kind of this whole along the side section. Um, and my fox needs a couple paws. <laughs> But yeah, I, I think I'll probably have this done by the next time I do a video. It is a present, a birthday present for someone in May. So I think I'll be able to finish this um, with plenty of time to frame it up before then. Um, I am really digging it. Also, I usually do like all my backstitch at the end, but because it's only little bits, I've just been doing it as I go, like some of the stuff that's around the letters and stuff, which... Um, it's kind of nice because then it's like completely like finished in those sections. Um, while I'm here, I have a piece of haul. I know this is out of order, but it's this grime guard, so I'm going to show you right now. Um, I picked this up last weekend from Tiffany from Black Cat X Stitchery. I'll put the link down below. She has an Etsy shop. She makes project bags, grime guards, different things. Um, and I had been looking for a more neutral colored grime guard because I find it really distracting. Um, let me show you an example. Maybe not, maybe this doesn't bother everybody. I'm going to show you the grime guard I had on this piece before I bought this more neutrally colored one. And, and let me see if you see what I mean. Because it's hard to find grime guards, I think, that aren't like crazy colors. Um, anyhow, so here's what I had, which is a very pretty grime guard, but it, it, it feels very distracting because the colors are so different from the neutrals in the piece. Versus once I put this one that's just like black and gold. Oh, that looks so much. Sorry, if I could make it fit. It looks so much happier. I don't know. I find colors that clash or don't belong to be highly distracting to me. And, um, you know, that shouldn't affect whether I want to pick something up and stitch on it, but it kind of does. I, I don't know if other people's brains are like that or just mine, but um, I was happy to find a grime guard that didn't hurt my brain with that particular project. So, I guess next I'll show you the one I just pulled out, which is called Frogs Princesses, which is an Owl Forest embroidery kit. Let's see if I can show the picture there. I swapped out the kit fabric because if you see, like the greens really fade. That was on kind of like an olive green, and it really faded in, which seems to be how a lot of the Owl Forest pieces are but I like my fabric and my floss to have more of a contrast. So I picked a different green, which is lighter and not, um, I think I'm still, I think I'm gonna like it. Uh, it's a little hard to tell because I don't have all the colors on here yet. Um, but uh, this piece of fabric, I'm sorry, is one of the ones I've got from my Fortnite Fabrics, Fabric of the Month. I think this is the one from February 
called? It's the Groovy Gradients Club, so they're all like, they all seem to be named after disco songs. So this one was um, Staying Alive. <laughs> um, I like the names of the fabrics, but they just don't really describe, you know, the actual color. <laughs> Um, so last time I had just barely started this, I had this, this stuff that is kind of like the brown trim. I had that done, um, for like half of the robe. So I have finished all that brown and even started up on the, um, what's this called? A column. I've done most of the green in this robe and I even started some of the gold that's going to come down the middle. I found it really interesting because this is a high variegation on this green particularly and I'm trying to make it look like actual flowing fabric so like that's the reason why even though I haven't finished it's like some weird parts in between because I was trying to match up the dark and light colors in such a way that it didn't that it looked right because yeah it's fabric which is kind of fun to do it's an inter I haven't really had to think about things like that um, before when I've been stitching, I just stitch, um, in lines, but, um, you can't always do that with the variegated floss. I mean, you can, but if you want it to look, um, good, <laughs> not distracting. Um, I don't think it would not look good otherwise, but you know, you know what I mean? So that is my second whip. Next, oh yeah, so I guess I could say the these project bags are also from Tiffany. I did I bought them a while ago, but she makes more than just crime guards. That is the pattern. I don't need that part of it. This is Dilly Dahlia by Ink Circles. Sorry, that was a high glare, so I'm just going to pull this out. There we go. It's kind of small. I think it's like six by six finish size on 32 count, two over two. And um, I am using a different color fabric, green fabric. And then I also changed the two green colors so that they looked good on the fabric since I changed that. And um, I, just, I did make some progress on this one. Even though this is very small, I don't find myself wanting to stitch on it for long periods of time. So, here's where we're at. Last time, I think, well, I definitely had the middle circle, and then I had this lilac color coming up and around to, I think it was about here. So I've kind of come across here. And then, I think I had the stem and the leaf of this color, and just maybe a tiny bit here. So I finished this leaf, and I've come across here. Um, I would really like to just finish all this lilac color, but I find it slow going, um, with that particular color. And that's why I had moved to the green because I needed a little break from it. It's, they're all over dyed flosses from the same company, but they don't all feel the same. Um, and I'm having just a lot of trouble with this like light, light purple one. It doesn't feel good in my hands. Um, or through or going through the fabric and I do keep you a little vindicated because I know you won't be able to see it on the video but if I take this and if I look at it like this you can see that the green and the brownish purple are all smooth and like flat you know as much as stitching is it's like and then when you see the lilac color it's like bumped up and raised more um, I find that kind of stuff so interesting because my technique is fairly consistent I think and it's like the same company but you know just different different things lay differently and I'm not trying to like I know I've did this before when I complained about like the quality of fabric and how my stitches weren't laying flat so I'm not trying to like make excuses for like when my stitching doesn't look as nice as it should but I do find it interesting that you can actually see the difference when a fabric or a floss is not great um, so anyhow I feel a little vindicated that I do not like stitching with that particular color because you can even see can even see the difference 
Um, but I'm over the hump with it. I should be able to finish that color and there are a couple other colors and hopefully I won't have the same problem with them. So there's that. Next is another piece from the same book, which I'm calling Four Seasons because it's like a sampler piece with four different quadrants, not quadrants, but well, I mean, they're quadrants because they're it's divided in four, but they're long skinny, long skinny quadrants. And my plan this year is to do one for each one in each season. And since it starts with spring on the side, I just started this on the first day of spring. So um, that glare is kind of bad. There we go. It's a little bit better. Um, so this is the full piece that I'm doing. And I'm just, like I said, working on this spring section. And my plan is that if I finish it before summer starts, I'm not planning to start the next part yet. Um, I will, I usually, <laughs> I kind of base how many projects I can have going um, on kind of, on how many Q snaps I have available. So I have other plans for this Q snap. If I finish the spring section before it's time to start summer, and I'm gonna have like these two pieces that are gonna like swap back and forth with this Q snap throughout the year. I know, I get overly, I have to, <laughs> overly organizational. Um, but this is where I'm at. So last time I had the bunnies and the daffodils done, these two little squares, and like a couple colors of this little rainbow band. And um, so I finished the rainbow band and I did that ladybug and the bird and the all that blue and starting in that tree. Now that tree, I'm only gonna do half of it because it's it's a piece, it's a motif that is half spring, half summer. So I will fill in the tree on this side and then the rest of it will be kind of for summer. I don't know. I might actually go ahead and do the branches while I'm at it, but we'll see. And um, it will come down. So this is the middle. This is where the spring ends and it comes down to probably about here. So I'm only two weeks into spring, right? Two weeks into spring. Yeah. Wow. And um, already quite quite a ways uh, through this. So this is an example of where the grand guard matches very nicely and makes me feel happy. <laughs> um, so there's that. Next one is my Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. This picture does not do it justice, but it is 18 bands, 19 colors. I'm doing, there's a couple different options that are charted and I'm doing the Dinky Dyes um, silks. And um, every other band is a cross stitch and a specialty stitch band. And I am on band five of 18, which is a cross stitch band, which is these yellow butterflies. That's where I'm at. I said before that I really like more of the warm colors. No, I keep saying that wrong. The cool colors. I really like the cool colors better. And I'm having to like push myself a little bit to get through these yellows so I can get to the colors I want to stitch. Let me put something behind this so you can see it. This is on a 32 count black linen. I don't know, just black linen. Hmm, maybe with, with color. I don't know. I don't remember who the brand is, but it's not a special color. It's just black. Um, and so I actually was, even though these are warm colors, I was really into like these first two colors. I was, they're very like saturated and bright and I love stitching them. And then it's like, I hit these like lighter colors and I'm just, I'm not feeling it as much, but there's one more after I, 
get through here. There's one more yellow. And then I'm going to be into the colors I'm excited about. So I feel like if I can just push through this next like band and a half, I will be happier. To, I will be more wanting to pick this up. That's weird way to make a sentence. Um, anyhow, since last time, I finished this last little bit of scallop stitches to finish this specialty stitch band, and I started on the cross stitches um, of these butterflies. So I have to come back. I have to come all the way down here with that, and then the second half of the butterflies will be that last yellow color. So I put like several hours into this, what, four and a half, five hours since last time. So we're making progress, slow and steady. I just, I had, when I first started this in January, this was like a new year start because I got the silks uh, from my husband for Christmas um, and the chart. Uh, anyhow, I was like really excited about it, doing, like having a hard time putting putting it down and then I've hit these yellows and I'm just like Ugh. so I'm really hoping that my excitement for this piece will come back soon I still like it I'm just not as excited as I was Put that up there is that all my whips I think I have one more which is the big one that is hard to actually see progress on but this one I think is just called Bear. I call it Watercolor Bear. It's large. It is 200 by 261 stitches. Here's the picture. Uh, the artist is Alyssa Akinias, who is one of my favorite designers. Uh, she is a Russian designer, so I don't know. It may, it may be hard to find her patterns right now because some of the places I've seen them before, they're not, a, you know, the sites are closed down right now. Um, luck, luckily for me, at least, I have several of hers already purchased and kitted up, but um, I hope they be, become available again because I really like her pieces. Um, I am in this top section, like going across this top part of the tree. There's like 16 pages or something to this chart. And I'm working on pages two and three because I don't like to stop at page breaks. <laughs> so. So this is like the first page I had finished before, and now I'm working on coming across here with the trees. I only I only worked on this for like maybe one day in the past two weeks. I did, but I did uh, like 315 stitches, so that's that's still good progress. It's better than nothing. I was working on some of this dark green that is coming across here. Oh, not dark green, like the medium green, and then coming down through here. Anyhow. Just doing some green, filling in these tree branches. And like I said, I'm doing, I did page one and now I'm doing two and three together because they are kind of using the same colors and continuing in. Um, page four is actually completely blank because as you can see the top corner is kind of, it's, it's you know, not centered. So it's all white. So I said there's 16 pages, but some of them are blank or almost blank. <laughs> um, so I would like to finish these too and then you know move the move the piece down. Um, also because when I very first started I was a little nervous about where I was going to start so I measured a million times and I put some thread in here and then I haven't moved the Q-snap so that I can remove this guide threads but I would like to take them out. But I've been waiting until it's time to move the Q snap so I can take those out so I would like to I would like to get to that point which I don't know I just haven't been haven't been feeling it I don't have like a frame stand or anything so that one's obviously on kind of a bigger frame it works well when I sit at my desk and I put it 
I kind of balance it between my body and the desk and I can even go two-handed when I do it that way but um, I don't know I'm just not always feeling it I guess so those are my all my works in progress no new starts I had a whole bunch last time you can go to my last video but also you just saw them because <laughs> they're still here um, and uh, let me show you some of my haul. I don't have many new things, but I have a couple things. Um, there's a local group of stitchers that has just started meeting monthly, like last November or December. I think I first started meeting with them in December. They may have had one meeting before that. And it was just a few people, and now it's a whole big group. Uh, and it's getting quite crowded at the monthly meet, 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 meetups, but it's very nice to be able to go and see people in person and stitch and meet people. Um, so they always have a freebie table there, um, and I was there last weekend. I didn't really, I had got some things last time I went, but this time all I picked up were a couple beads because there is a project that it calls for beads, but it doesn't tell you what kind, and they're kind of earthy tones. So I just picked up some brown and tan and gold beads that maybe I will be able to use when I get to that project. And if I don't, I'll just take them back and put it back on the freebie table. <laughs> Pretty easy, huh? Um, I still have not done a piece with beads, but I have a couple kitted up, so I would like to try that out soon. Next, I said that I was in, sorry for the crinkles, I'm gonna open this up the Fortnite Fabrics Fabric of the Month Club in the Groovy Gradients uh, division. So that is usually like they take one color and then it's a couple different shades of that color. So I think I've gotten blue and green and so this is the March fabric which is pink and it's very pink. It's very pink so I have no idea what I'm going to use this one for. It's a 32 count Lugana 8th yard and this one is called Dancing Queen. I don't know what I'm going to use this for. I had an idea. I have a Mirabilia that I need some fabric for and it needs a pink. And I had seen just like the tiny little snapshot of this one. I was like, oh good, I'm going to use this for that. But this is not going to work for it. I need more of a dusty pink. I would like this kind of mottled stuff, but I just need it to be dustier. This is very bright. I don't even know if you're seeing quite how bright it is. Maybe there. Um, so if you know where I could get something that's kind of like this, but dustier, let me know because they don't have these kinds of fabrics in any of the places that I can physically go to. So I end up having to buy them off the internet and it's kind of hard to get fabric that way because you, you don't, um, you know, you can't see it in person. And let me show you what I am looking for for it. This is what I need it for, is this Botanical Garden Mirabilia piece. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic, but it, I think a pink background would be nice, like how they have, but it needs to be dustier. If you have any suggestions for me, let me know, because I would like to know. Um, also, you know, maybe one of these other Fabric of the Months will be the right color. I mean, I don't think I'm going to get another pink one, but, you know, maybe it'll be a, a different color that will work for that. Um, next, oh, this is just, <laughs> I finally, not finally, I went and just bought, like, the big thing of cheap project bags from Amazon because I just want to use them for some kitted up projects. And I use, currently what I use is, um, Sorry, I use these like folders, right? That are like plastic with a little clip. Um, I also got these off Amazon, but I thought those would be nice. So I will use some of those. And then the last things that I have in my haul is um, I won a giveaway, yay, here on Flosstube from Sarah at Notorious Needle. Sarah and her mom, I don't know. Hmm. What is Sarah's mom's name? I can't remember. But they do a floss tube together, and Sarah designs patterns. And she just had a giveaway for her 5,000 
subscribers because she just got 5,000 so that's great and um, I got to pick any pattern from her shop so I picked something that was a stitch along I think last year before I was on floss gym which is called we believe it's the we believe stitch along and um, I'm very excited about this one I think I will do this the whole piece like but it's also kind of nice because you can do all these like little pieces individually as well in little bite-sized nuggets right um, so that is cool also I can't I don't have anything to show but I bought the pattern for her upcoming stitch along that's starting on I think April 15th mid-April um, which is a pro-choice stitch along and so I'm very excited about that and I guess you'll see it when I start it because <laughs> there's it's a mystery stitch along so I have nothing to show I bought it but I have nothing to show for that pattern um, besides like a shopping list that I need to go and get some floss for um, <laughs> But, so maybe I don't know when I will do my next video. I don't know if I'll have started that by then or not. But I do want to, as far as plans go, finish either the Be Kind piece or the Dilly Dally. I think both of them are possible to finish in the next two weeks to make room for me to start that stitch along in mid-April. So, that's, that's the plan there. Um... As far as other plans, just keep just keep going, get my stuff ready for that stitch along, and finish one or both of those uh, those pieces. And um, yeah, uh, I didn't do it last time, but I was going to give hiking updates in my videos too. I had a hard time staying motivated to go do my hikes in March. The weather was awful here; it was snowing sometimes, it was raining a lot. The mud is just awful out on the trails so I made it out some but not as much as I wanted to but now it's April and I went out this morning I did three miles um, and it was very muddy but the weather was nice and I'm starting to see some of the plants sprout up which is exciting one of the things that I love about hiking in April um, where I live at least which is Pennsylvania in the United States is that every time you go out in April even if it's only a few days in between you see new plants sprouting uh, today I saw there's hardly anything coming up but hold on okay sorry I guess I need to wrap this up before I get interrupted again I also realized I forgot to show you what but let me finish talking about my hiking um yeah, I saw violets and even some trilliums sprouting up today. Like, nothing's blooming, but just their leaves, um, bed straw, uh, cut leaf toothwort. So, there are things springing up. I heard some turkeys gobbling. I heard and saw a woodpecker. So, it's nice to get out and um, see some spring happening. <laughs> Um, I totally forgot that I forgot to show you one of my works in progress. This isn't cross stitch, it's um, counted canvas work. I saw it on, I saw this type of needlework on Carolyn's floss tube, which is called Carolyn Stitches. And she's been doing a lot of these pieces and they looked really fun. So I bought one. This is the chart. Azaleas by Moonlight from Nancy's Needle and um, I've been working on this it's a little different it's um, you use like thicker like use like curl cotton and you don't like try to you know you don't unstrand it and you do it on canvas with stretcher bars um, but also oh this one's nice and glittery let me see if I can show you there um, I don't know exactly where I was last time but my goal was to finish this whole center square and I did um, obviously I did a tiny little bit up above it just because I still had thread on my needle so <laughs> I got to keep going till the thread's gone um, 
it is looking great. I love it. It's kind of fun to work on. Um, it feels like it goes fast because the stitches are longer, you know, than a cross stitch. And um, you can see that middle square is where I am. So there's still quite a lot to go to come all the way out to like, you know, about an inch in from the stretcher bars. So there's that. Um, sorry, I forgot to include that with my other whips. I had it sitting on the other side of my chair than all the others <laughs> because it's big with those stretcher bars and it doesn't fit into my crate that I put all my other whips in. So anyhow, thanks for sticking around. Um, and I will plan to make another video in about two weeks, mid-April. So I will see you then and happy stitching. Bye.